I'm about to share with you a process that will explain to you further how we access, activate, and apply the Spirit of Allah within us. And how prayer is actually, can be done so that it can be answered. And what I'm saying to you is the way that people usually pray, which is desperate and needy, looking for relief, is not a prayer. That's why it's not answered. The Quran also tells us the prayers of those without faith is nothing but vain prayers. <coughs> so you might say, but I prayed. It didn't work. Maybe Allah is punishing me. Maybe I'm not good enough. No, I assure you. The only condition for your prayers to be answered is one, the acknowledgement of the one unseen that is all powerful in a sense of it has power of all things created. Yeah. See? That is all that is required. It is an unseen, loving, supportive, benevolent, beneficent <coughs> essence that has provided for us our endowments, your mind, your choices, and has and empowered us with its spirit. You don't know how much you are loved. I really wish you would, ever, would one day come to understand how deeply loved you are by your Creator. That He not only called you forth lovingly, but He supports your existence, and He has given you His spirit to create with. I wish that one day soon you will know the love of Allah and experience. This is not done in an evangelical way. It's done in a very factual way. Because that's what it is. When Allah created humanity, He asked the rest of creation to bow down in honor. This is not a small thing. It's not a small thing. He says we have given you gifts and favors. We have not given any other creation. It's not a small thing. This is very real. It's not a fairy tale. It's not the mystification of, yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. We just carry on, let's do what's right. And, you know, wrong and this and that. This is it. So here's the profound thing. Everything you need to have whatever you want, you already have. Everything you need to have the experience you want, you already have. I ask you, what do you need? You don't tell me if I had money, it'll sort my problems out. If I had a man who loved me, it'll sort things out. If, if I just have, so what has happened is, firstly, we are in denial of Allah, which is called kufr, we conceal. How could it be any other way when our own leaders don't know and they conceal? Allah is the biggest kept secret in Islam and the, you know, the beloved Prophet, who he was, these are big secrets. There's a whole you know, big problem we have here, that the purveyors of Islam are hiding Allah and the beloved Prophet. <laughs> and that we are reciting the Quran but not reading it. Because serious problems here. Now, if we didn't have Allah and the Prophet and the Quran and this message of glad tidings that empowers humanity, you know, I can understand. It would mean nothing. Again, I told you about an issue when people are ignorant and superstitious and they promote this. So if we didn't have that, I wouldn't get upset. But that we have it and we don't understand it and we don't use it, that's what pushes my buttons. If you can begin to say, there are things that I don't understand, I might have clues, but I really don't, then you can begin to understand. But if you continue with the same understanding that you've had, then there can be no new learning, there can be no new growth. You understand? That you don't understand? Yes. I know that I don't know? Yes. <laughs> so, we have everything that we need to have whatever we want. We have the ultimate loving, benevolent, the one that has provided for us. The one that takes care of us. So some people say, but who, what do you mean? I should have Allah doesn't take care of me. Allah takes care of you. Your food is digested. Your immune system is there to protect you. Your mind works. I just have to think a thought before I can, I'm speaking. It just comes through me. Allah is taking care of us. Allah is giving us oxygen from the trees. Allah is taking care of us. Every human being. Not a single human being is not cared for. In that way. And Allah not only has cares for us, but takes care of things for us. Mm. What does that mean, He takes care of things for us? The earth spins on its axis. Who's doing that? Creating day and night. So, the Quran says this is a science for those who reflect. The biggest cap secret is that your purpose of your creation was to live a life of delight and enjoyment and fulfillment with the recognition of Allah. 
in a healthy, natural way. In a way that you don't hurt yourself and don't hurt anybody else. In a, in a way that's not destructive. See? So, I told you early on that we don't learn security and satisfaction. And that's what is where a wholesome person and a wholesome community is moves towards. Security that comes from knowing that you are loved, supported, etc. That you're taken care of and things are taken care of for you. But here's the most important one. All of them are important. That Allah makes things happen for you. <laughs> Allah makes things happen for you. Let's move into practicals and practices of this process. I have created a foundation that I call Peace, Power and Prosperity Foundation International. And there's a reason for it. Because this is Salam. This is Iman. And this is Dua. These are the steps that you have to go through for accessing and experiencing the connection with Allah and to be able to use it and wield it. Using and wielding Allah is called Dua in Arabic Da'a which means to invoke and summon. You summon Allah, you invoke Allah. When you are in a state of security, you don't look from, you're not desperate and you don't look for relief and safety and excitement, which is the way of the world. The way of the world teaches you these three things. Relief seeking. You feel stressed, let's look for some masking of the stress and some relief. Let's have some food, you know, let's go out and do something to distract ourselves. Our whole community is based on relief seeking, not peace and ease. So we will find that these are the agendas of the ego, the relief. I am going through a hard time, it's just too much, I just need a break. You know, I just, I just need to get away from all these things, looking for relief. A whole community is a drug, is a, is a drug addicted community, because that's what we're looking, we're going through, experiencing tremendous distress, that's why you know, we don't know, because you're schooled out of sensibility, so people are getting sicker by the day, because their immune systems are compromised, because they are in a state of stress, they're not in a state of salam. You know, people are going through more and more, uh, you know, heart, heart attacks and hardships and <coughs> suffering because we are schooled into a state of stress that we don't even know that's so prevalent that everybody is in. We don't understand the unnaturalness of the system that we're in. It's taking its toll on us as individuals, as communities, but we can't see it because our academics didn't tell us this is a problem or some authority figure didn't. They're all part of the same system. The idea is to release fear so that you experience security. Holding on to fear and then thus trying to create something to make you feel better. I've got this expensive car, what if somebody steals it? Let me insure it. The fear is still there, but you are trying to allay that fear through relief seeking. So society is built with this whole thing of selling you relief, safety, that's why drug addiction, legal and otherwise, is the order of the day, people are in substances, it's, uh, you know, people are depending on other people, neediness of every kind is in our society because you're looking for relief, I'm dependent on somebody or something or money. Perhaps the biggest idol today is money. Money is a piece of paper that has died, it's died, you know, it's got ink on it, or it's got nickel, and you see people with Machine guns guarding armored vehicles. Mm -hmm. What can money do for you? That piece of paper <laughs> can't do, but it reminds me of the, you know, at the time of the uh, prophet when people have idols, this thing could do nothing for them. Those idols could do nothing. Yet they gave it so much of power. We, through agreement, have given something that doesn't have any power, power. And now we are slave to it. Cost of things will keep going up, keeping you trapped. Keeping you trapped. Why? You worship money. You do not worship Allah. Excitement is the other thing that society sells us in about the ego. Excitement. Excitement is what do you think will sort your problem out? What do you think will happen in the world or can happen in the world and all your problems will be sorted out? What's that for you? If I won the lotto, South Africa's version of the lottery, the lotto. I'll be so rich, everything will be okay. If I met the man of my dreams, that will make my world, you see? No. 
Joy is a function of connecting with love and security. There's no shortcut to the world. There's no shortcut. You see? So we are interested in real ease. We're interested in real, not relief, in real ease. And we're not interested in safety, we're interested in security. Real security. And we're not interested in excitement, we're interested in real wholesome satisfaction. Fulfillment. Fulfillment. Satisfaction. In our mosques and our institutions, they give joy and happiness a bad rap. They confuse it with excitement. Young people today, and even some older people, they're looking for branded names. They get excited. Oh, I'm wearing a this and I'm wearing a that. You know, you get excitement. That is not satisfaction. Satisfaction is this garment feels very comfortable. It's good quality, serves me well. That's satisfaction. Serving me in my fulfillment. It's enjoyable, it's meaningful. People can't see that. In fact, one of the biggest problems today is we're suffering from PMS. Everybody. Prosperity malabsorption syndrome. It's similar to nutritional malabsorption syndrome. You know, people eat food and it doesn't get absorbed and it just passes through and they die of starvation. So prosperity malabsorption syndrome is when a person has so much, but they can't see it and they begin to focus on the one thing that they don't have. See, prosperity malabsorption syndrome. And then they get a bit cranky and all that sort of thing, you know, not in a good mood and all that. So we are not taught what is appreciation. Quran speaks of appreciation. To those that appreciate, they will get more. This is a scientific fact. Those who focus on feeling good about what they have is a vibration that will be responded to by the universe to give them more. These are laws that govern the universe. Appreciation is, this really serves me. This is really meaningful to me. This brings out in me passion or appreciation or meaningful. This is something I love. This is something I enjoy. This is something for, it comes back to self-expression. So my point is to show us that where we are going in error, and we can't see we're going in error, and how we can turn around and move towards real wholesomeness. Sounds good? Yes. This is an exact science. I'm not bullshitting you. This is an exact science. So, peace. You find yourself in a situation. Not enough money. Relationships not that hot. You know, whatever's going on. You find yourself in a situation. We all have something in our life that's not working out. And what do we do first? We blame. Whose fault is it? Whose fault is it? It's because of this person and that person and that person or the government. You don't have to like what's happening. You don't have to agree. But ease, the release of the ego is the first step. And that's where most people get blocked. So we have to release. It's interesting that the word ease and like real ease, you know, you gotta release. Real ease. You gotta release. You gotta release the fighting. You've got to release the ego. The ego is that part of you that wants to make a story and is affected and tries to change things and kick up a fuss and when that doesn't happen, you try other things and you become desperate and you become needy. That's the ego. It's got no faith. Because it believes it's separate from everybody and everything. It believes there is no Allah. It believes it's by itself and it has to depend on itself. So if you want to have Iman connect with Allah, you have to begin to understand what are the obstacles to connecting with Allah. These are things that block your desires or your prayers from coming into being. And the first one is blame. Who do you blame? So let's take something that people can relate to here. And look, you might not like what I'm telling you, but contemplate it for your own sake. Really, I tell you that with unrivality. When you're powerless within you, you will draw people to overpower you. When you're afraid to express yourself and ask for what you want, you'll get people who will stop you from doing that, you see? We don't realize that we have a role to play in our experience. The Quran says that when bad things happen to you, misfortune befalls you, it is your own hands that have wrought it, see? Mankind 
I know you've been told that whatever happens to you happens from Allah. No, it's not. You eat red meat every day, you don't exercise, you just sit and watch television, you get sick, you get a heart attack and you die and you say, it came from Allah. <laughs> so there is a role that you're playing in your life, granted you don't know because the schools and universities didn't teach you these things, so you don't know, you've been like, you know, Mark Twain said it this way, schooling interfered with his education. Mm -mm. Understand? There's an agenda in the school system and it's not to educate you to get you to fit into the system, to do what it needs you to do and to keep you powerless in, its, in the way that you are. And you're wondering why, you know, is this God is doing this to us? Why is He doing this to us? Allah has given us glad tidings. He says, invoke me and I will surely respond. If you try this and it doesn't work for you, you come back and tell me it doesn't work because it always works because it's a universal law. The thing is you've got to follow the steps and work the steps at each. I'm a scientist, so I'll give you a model, I'll give you the steps, this is how you go, and watch the results that happen in your life. All experience is created vibrationally, and this is the justness of Allah, that nothing ever happens to a people that they haven't participated in. When you wonder why is that woman getting beaten up, it's so unfair, etc., let me explain to you. All the women that I worked with who were getting beaten up and all that, they did not have self-appreciation. Again, what's that? Not taught about to value oneself. Huh? And in Islam, here we go again, women were raised at that particular time from people that you didn't see. As far as I'm concerned, they were raised to queens, despite anything else. That if you, you know, if you marry the woman, you can't take any of her money. If she was really a slave, you'll take her money that, um, you know, you have to give her money. And if she makes money, you can't touch that money. And that she has her own private chamber that not you or the mother-in-law can go into. And she doesn't even have to prepare food for you. She's not a slave. She doesn't have to prepare food for you, that you have to get a maid or something if you can. And if she bears your children, she doesn't have to suckle them. The Prophet and Allah have raised women to royalty. You can say what you want, yeah. this is my perception. How many women feel like queens is the question. How many of you say I have dignity given to me by my creator? So women don't feel the vibration of self-appreciation and self-respect. And then they attract people who treat them badly. You see, I'm here. I have dignity, self-respect, etc. If I came here and you guys are treating me badly, I'll say, where's the nearest taxi? I'm out. Come This is not for me. If I have low self-esteem, etc., what will the people think, whatever, I'll stick it out in a space that I don't want to be in and subject myself to unkindness. The women who stay with the men who beat them up have no self-respect. I'm not blaming them. I'm just telling you as a fact. And they do not desire for themselves to be held and cared for and loved. They don't desire. You know, like I told you, a, a prayer is a desire, a natural desire. If you don't say, I'd love to be in a relationship with a man who understands me, who I understand, that we have similar interests, um, or a partner, you know, and um, it's delightful and enjoyable, and that's you focusing on what you want. But a person without self-appreciation and life value who believes that my job is to please somebody else and never to be pleased, what do you expect that person to have in their life? I know we hypnotize and it might be hard for you to understand what I'm saying because you don't see the vibrational nature of reality. When something is happening, there is a vibrational nature that is underpinning that. You only see the, verb, the, the face value of it. That man's an animal to hit this person like this or whatever it is. You don't understand what she puts herself through. How hard and critical she is on herself, expecting herself to earn love. This is what I'm saying, the methods that we're using around the world to deal with the challenges are illusory. They're not getting to the real cause of problems, which is a person, the way they feel about themselves, the, the way they feel about God, the way they feel about life, the vibration of security. What is the contribution you're going to make to your own life, to the lives of your loved ones and to humanity?
There's a role for us to play. We have left our homes. Some of us traveled across the world. We are here because we are interested. But the methods that we're using will be looked at. We got to say, are we using methods that really work, or are we using methods that are dark age methods that don't work? So we here, we showed up. But I'm hoping to impart with you that there is different methods to be used with dealing with the situations that we have in our own personal lives and in the lives of community that you might not know, that you don't know. Because the educated among us, they act like they know. They don't know themselves. With respect. With respect. If I'm wrong, bring them and discuss, and I will tell you that this is empirical. I'm saying this out of great love for us. Your experience is a function of the vibration you are emitting. Mm. Listen to me carefully, it's revolutionary, it's evolutionary. You can never ever have an experience that your vibration doesn't create. This is the greatness of Allah. Nothing ever happens to anybody that they haven't played a part in. This is why the guidance give, tells us to have faith, to turn, to connect, to see. see? Nothing ever happens to you. I'm very sorry to tell you that. It happened through you. Let me tell you something else. Shame. Shame. Shame is the worst spiritual poison ever. And a lot of people in this environment here are carrying a lot of shame. Shame is the opposite of love. Not war or hate that is the opposite of love. It's shame. Shame. Your failure to recognize that Allah loves you unconditionally is a problem. You don't have to earn Allah's love. You just have to recognize it and receive it. Those of you who are doing things for love will spend your whole life earning things, money and all. I don't earn money. I receive it. I don't earn love. I receive it. You like me? Fine. You don't like me? That's okay too. I like me, Allah loves me, who cares what other people, if I know I'm loved by Allah, everybody else's love means nothing to me. That's why I can be bold.